cloud computing. Okay, cloud computing is essentially having information stored on many servers in many locations by a hosting company. And the challenge that they face is that they have to cater for unique security constraints within a shared environment. So here are all these companies coming, storing their information, but they've got different levels of security within the same network. How do they actually go about handling that? And then also there's the issue from an organizational level where you have to manage the flexibility of the cloud and also protecting the organization. So you have to be able to um, control the inflow and the outflow of information without being too secure about it because then that will compromise how your business is done. And um, because of this, efforts are being made to look into regional cloud services and that way it minimizes this, the landscape of the cloud instead of it being on a global scale, it's then on a local scale. And what that means is local companies and startups can now compete at a global scale. And the differentiator could literally be that your organization provides more security than the next in whatever terms that that may be. Bring your own device, the consumerization of IT. This is a very big game changer. And um, mobility changes everything. We've seen this from laptops, we've seen this from smart devices, and we've also seen it with the tablets. This means that your office is anywhere and everywhere at any time. And that brings a challenge. In South Africa, we haven't necessarily, we're not fully accustomed to that yet. You'll still have your work phone and your personal phone. But in other first world countries, they're literally using one device for their personal use and for their work use. And it becomes a problem, for example, if you have a partner who's working for the opposition, they might just want to see what's in that device because they, they maybe could know the password. If you decide to leave the organization, they will wipe your phone and that will include your personal data and the work data because they need to protect themselves. And now your grocery lists are gone, the pictures of your family is gone, but in the company's eyes, they're safe, their information is gone. And that will then be the question of security versus privacy. Where do you draw the line? And if you're going to, to um, initiate a technology like this, you need to also behave, be able to have the control mechanism. So it's all good and well to be excited, but we need to know how we're going to handle such things, and those things haven't necessarily been concluded yet. And it's also getting to a point where there's a new term called data breach fatigue, where it means people are getting hacked so many times and compromised that they're just avoiding protecting themselves as a whole, and they just don't do it. And another thing to consider with bring your own device is that if you've got three devices, you increase your, your spectrum as a threat. Because if you've had one device, you're a one-to-one -one threat. If you're three devices, you're now a three-to-one threat. You're more likely to be intercepted. And then we'll go on to the next one, big data. Big data is a touchy subject. It's the big brother of IT. Um, so what they do is they, they, they monitor us, they're watching us, and they say that it's for our convenience. So if Google sees that you, every time you go onto Google, you're searching for cars of a specific brand, when you go to websites, ads of that specific brand will come up. If your medical aid sees that you're getting sick very frequently and they're using big data as an analyzing mechanism, they might just offer you another medical aid plan that would better suit your lifestyle or whatever. So essentially big data is large data sets that's used to analyze information. So it identifies patterns, trends, and behaviors. And from that, what they say is they, they make a better experience for their customers. But many customers have declined services just on the fact that how do you know? How do you know this? How can I trust you going forward if you've already been snooping in my life? And how can I trust that whatever information you have, you won't give to anybody else to use for whatever benefits that they have? 
So it's really important to know that even tiny aggregates of data can profile you as a person. And simple things like what you're buying at a shopping mall can also profile you. The next one is the Internet of Things. So the Internet of Things is the interconnectivity of devices, and they will then be able to communicate to each other. So as previously explained, you can switch your lights on from wherever you are. Your car might be able to drive itself, and your fridge might tell you that your milk is almost finished. But um, it's, it's, it's very tricky because the path that the information is taking might be tampered with, and loss or theft of that device could leak a lot of information, along with bring your own device as well. And these, these um, devices, I call them dumb devices, because they, they don't necessarily have the ability to detect that they've been breached, and they also don't have a way yet to, to notify the user that they've been breached, unless then, you switched on your lights and now there's a disco at your house and the lights are going on and off or the milk is finished every five minutes or in an extreme case, if, you're, if you are driving and the car is now supposed to hit brakes but somebody's hacked you, it could carry on driving and that could then result in who knows what. Social media. So social media, there's two aspects of social media and um, well, I only started working last year, but the year before that, I was very concerned with keeping my social media profile clean because the first thing they look at when you submit your CV is your social media profile. And you might argue that that's an unfair way to judge me. That's my own personal space. You shouldn't be looking at me from that way. But it comes in again where we're saying, you are the brand. And if they already perceive you in a specific way, they might not want to associate their brand with that behavior. And um, another thing is you need to be careful what information it is that you're putting on social media because simple, a lot of people are now losing their jobs because of things that they post on social media, be it accidentally leaking client information, be it saying negative things about their coworkers or just discrediting um, the company, or unfairly, you know, so with companies now, before they actually send out a tweet or a Facebook post, it actually goes through a rigorous checking process before they hit send. And that's why you'll find that the English is perfect word for word, it's straightforward, etc. And if you're just going to write whatever, it becomes a problem. The other aspect of that is if you're in a high position and you put yourself in a, in and in, in a situation where you're now having to lose your job because of something you said, you still can't argue that that's your private space and that's your personal space. Because again, back to the terms and conditions, it's a public space, it's not actually a private space. And also, in the, in the sense of content, a lot of people are now being, being concerned about their content being used as the news, you'll see that News reporters aren't reporting anymore. They're just reading tweets off of the screen and people are, they want credit, financial credit for it. They don't just want their handles being put out there. Okay, common mistakes. So we all always put ourselves in situations, knowingly or unknowingly, where we might be compromising our data or we ourselves are the vulnerabilities. There's always the human element that's there. Locking your device. It's a big problem to leave your device unlocked. And also with passwords, there's a trend now that's coming up to rather come up with pass phrases so that you can include your uppercase letters, your um, hieroglyphics as they call them these days. So you can come up with a pass phrase that says, Dumi's presentation is 100% super cool. That way, it's long, it has uppercase and lowercase letters, you can put in numbers, and it has all the combinations that they'd want. And with biometrics now coming up, you know, passwords are becoming a force to be reckoned with, with when you're having to use it, your fingerprints or your eyes, example, to access certain things. Downloading the latest apps. It was mentioned earlier as well that 
many times applications are released and they still have vulnerabilities in them and then the patches are released later on. So it's really important for everybody to go and get those upgrades because they come with the security patches that are required. On the flip side, those upgrades could just include more functionality and not more security, meaning more vulnerability. So you never really know. Um, a lot of companies don't have your master data management where they can keep track of the information that's going into their organization and also going out of their organization. They also don't encrypt their devices. So essentially, information could be going in and out. Nobody will know. You can go to your company's knowledge portal, download everything onto your personal computer, leave the job, and go to your next job and give them all the methodologies. And nobody would know unless somebody's memorized that entire <laughs> knowledge portal. And then accessing questionable content. This also comes with bring your own device where if you do take your device and use it as a work device, there are certain sites that they block and that could be a problem because maybe you wanna watch YouTube videos but it's not allowing you access to do that. But if you do, then you're putting yourself at risk to be hacked. And also things like downloading third party apps when you don't know where the applications are coming from. So applications from your Windows Store, your Apple Store, and your Google Play Store, they might not be 100% secure, but at least they go through a screening process where they are assessed for some sort of security, whereas you don't know what vulnerabilities a third-party application would have. And then, storing organizational information on unauthorized devices. Now granted, your organization might not have a bring your own device policy where they can actually incorporate all the software that's needed, but that still doesn't justify you putting it on that other unauthorized device, especially if you haven't locked it, you don't have the latest apps and you're opening questionable content because then you're really putting the organization's information at risk and then you could be charged with information theft and that could have heavy repercussions. And then public and unsecure Wi-Fi. That has already been spoken about. I don't need to dwell on that at all. So people can literally access your device when you use open Wi-Fi. It's, I mean, for, for me it's rocket science, but for some people, evidently. It's not, and they can do it very quickly. Not following your company's social media policy. Firstly, a lot of people aren't aware that their organizations have a social media policy to begin with, and if they are aware that they exist, they don't really know what they say, and if you don't know that something's there, then it's very difficult to comply to it. So releasing client information, discrediting um, your colleagues, that's, that's something that becomes a mistake. Disaster recovery and outsourcing. So a lot of people are now outsourcing their IT function so that people who are better equipped, as they put it, to manage the IT function are then in charge of it. And for disaster recovery and outsourcing, you need to be sure that your service providers have the necessary security in place to protect the integrity of the data that you're saving there. Because in the event of a data, a data disaster, in the event of a disaster, you need to know that the information that you're bringing back is valid and it hasn't been tempered with. And if you, um, you're outsourcing your IT function, you need to know that that service provider isn't compromising your data and is not putting it in a position where your data is now um, vulnerable to being accessed or changed or stolen, for example. So you need to know the business impact analysis of um, not having a security plan in place. You need to assess the risks and the gap analysis of where your security gaps are and what the risks are and if they materialize, how are you going to go about solving those issues? And you need to have a plan, a real plan. And with disaster recovery especially, it has to be practiced because 
practice saying you'll do something in a policy and when it actually happens, it's not the same thing because a lot of people will write in their disaster recovery. When a disaster hits, we're gonna send out emails to everyone forgetting that the email server is gonna be down. You're not gonna send emails to everybody. And those are things that people only find out later on when the disaster actually hits. So mitigating the risk. That is the circle of life. Don't let Mufasa lie to you. <laughs> that, that methodology applies to everything. Identify, analyze, plan, track, control. You can apply it to your personal life. You can apply it to your work life. And it works with everything. Risks as well. You need to identify your risks, analyze them, plan for them, track the risks so you can pick up if there are any trends or frequencies in what's happening and control the risks by, by mitigating them. And then there is also legal protection. So um, po the POPI law regulates the manner in which companies process personal information and it manages the free flow of information in business versus the privacy of that information. And um, you got RECA. RECA, everyone has the right to privacy and not having their privacy infringed. It regulates the interception of communication and telecommunication companies are required to store the information related. And we, we've also got PIA. PIA is, um, it allows access to any information held by the state and information held by private bodies that is required to exercise the protection of any rights. So that means if you're in a legal fight and you need to back up your rights, that law means they have access to whatever information that they need to protect you. And then ECTA, believe it or not, there's a regulation against spam. You never would have known because we get so much anyway. So <laughs> a way to mitigate these risks is to communicate firstly that these risks are there and they're real and people need to notice that they exist. And we need to educate people on how to go about handling these risks and how, to, how they can report them, etc. And we need to prevent these risks, stop them from happening completely. Prevention is always better than cure. And you need to be able to detect these risks as soon as they happen so that you can fix them. Because yes, somebody can breach your security, but it's still going to take a bit of time for them to gather all the information that they need. So the quicker you detect that there's been a breach, you can fix that and close that. And you can deter security breaches by discouraging them, by informing people that there is legal protection and if they do not comply, there's legal action that could be taken um, with them. And with regards to recovering, if your data is breached and the integrity is lost, then you need to be able to recover the proper data that was there to begin with. And then there's the human element. So what we all know is that at the center of all IT problems is a human. So usually the systems are designed well and although they may have vulnerabilities, humans can do things like accidentally deleting data, inserting the wrong information, not knowing what it is that they should or shouldn't do so they don't follow the process properly, having workarounds to process that should be in a specific manner, and um, putting in the incorrect transactions. So awareness is a very big thing, and we need to provide awareness to users about all of these things. And we need to have, we need to follow the security triangle and you need to balance the use of security so that the application or the service is still practical and usable because if you put in too much security for example if you want to go into a blog and you need to enter your credit card details that's not practical people are not going to do that and that makes it not usable and if you consider too much of the usability aspect, then your security and your practicality is also compromised. So the benefits of having a secure environment is having accurate information, efficient business flow. It can differentiate you and mitigate any risks that could come forward. So there's no point having a loaded gun 
and stepping in uh, and going somewhere blindfolded and shooting nowhere where you don't know at the incorrect risk model. You need to know. And going forward, I'll just say the information we have now needs to create security awareness. So the next step we have to take is just a next step in the evolution that's been taken. Thank you.